This is exactly where I found these scallops, and today I'm going to show you not only where to find them, but all the gear you will need to harvest them, the best boat ramps in the scene hatchy, and what they look like underwater to ensure you won't go home empty-handed during this year's scallop season. Steenhatchee, Florida is known by many to be the scalloping capital of the world, and it's among one of the first places in the state to open their season. They start June 15th this year, and Steenhatchee is going to see thousands of people try their hand at catching scallops. When you are looking for scallops, you pretty much have two options once you get outside the channel. You can go north up into this area, or you can go south down into this area. Both areas have very good scalloping grounds, and what I would recommend is going into this area near a little place called Rock Point. In today's video, this is where you'll see where I found some scallops. Um, all of this right here is grass, which is a very good habitat for scallops. And if you decide to go south, you don't really have to go too far. Um, look for a place called Hardy Point. There is again a lot of grass in this area, very good for finding scallops. However, if you still are struggling to figure out where to go, just look for the flotilla. Typically during scallop season, especially on the weekends, there'll be a large host of boats in one area and that typically means that there are scallops around. Whenever you arrive in Steenhatchee, you're gonna have two boat ramps to choose from. I'll leave a link down below for the FWC boat ramp finder. To the south of the Steenhatchee River, you're gonna have the Gina Public Boat Ramp. Here is a free boat ramp that offers two lanes in a very large parking lot right down the road. I prefer using this boat ramp simply because it's free and it's right across the river from the Sea Hag Marina, which is one of the premier marinas in this area. Now your second option is actually the Steen Hatchy Public Boat Ramp. This is also another really nice boat ramp. It actually has three ramps along with a long docking system to where you can park your boat while you are parking your truck or trailer. It has a smaller parking lot in the immediate area, but you also have parking options across the street from the boat ramp. Now, one reason why I don't use this boat ramp is because there is a $5 ramp fee. However, it is a very nice ramp, and I do like the fact that it's got this long ramp here for you to be able to park your boat at while you are getting everything finalized. The other benefit of this boat ramp is it is a little bit closer to the Gulf. As you can see here, and it also is very close to a new marina that popped up called the Steenhatchy Marina at Dead Man's Bay. So first and most importantly is you're gonna need a pair of goggles. That way you can see the bottom and look for the scallops while you're in the water. Not required, but highly recommended is a snorkel. That way you're able to keep your eyes on the bottom while you're looking for scallops and also be able to breathe and not have to keep coming up for air and losing sight of either a scallop you've already seen or just while you're on the hunt looking for the scallops. Optional but highly recommended is a set of flippers just so you can save energy while you are swimming and it'll allow you to cover a lot more ground while you're looking for the scallops. Next, you're gonna want a mesh bag. That way, whenever you find a scallop, you can easily put the scallop into the bag and move on to the next one that you're gonna catch. Having a clip is highly recommended. That way you can just strap it to your pants and you won't have to worry about ever losing the bag while you're scalping. Next, you're gonna want sunscreen. It's Florida, it's hot, the UV index especially during this time of the year is very high and sunscreen is gonna help protect you from the sun and believe me, while you are scalloping, you're gonna be face down with your back up. So you really wanna make sure you get the neck and back and shoulders when you're scalloping. Otherwise, you're gonna go home and be fried. Even better if you don't feel like applying sunscreen all day long, you can get a nice sun shirt like this, that way you're protected from the UV rays and not have to apply sunscreen while you're scalloping. Last and certainly not least is snacks and beverages. You wanna enjoy the time while you're on the water and especially with how hot it is and the energy you're going to be exerting while scalloping and snorkeling. You wanna make sure you stay hydrated and it's always nice to have a nice snack while you're on the boat. Next, we're gonna move on to the important safety gear to use while you're scalloping. One of the most important pieces that you will need specifically while you're scalloping is a diver down flag. This flag indicates that you actively have people swimming in or around your, you can't swim in a boat, but. This flag lets other boaters know that you have people actively swimming around your boat. If you see a diver down flag, you're not to be boating within 300 yards of them. 
make sure you are very cognizant of that because the last thing you want to do is run over someone while you are trying to go scalloping. Now the next pieces of equipment I'm going to go over are for general boating in the state of Florida. I'll make sure to leave a link to the FWC website that way you can ensure you've got a full list of what you actually need while you're boating. If you're renting a boat, most likely they'll have all of the equipment on board for you, but if you're coming down on vacation, make sure you have these items, otherwise you might get a ticket from the FWC. First and foremost, you're gonna want a life jacket for everyone on board. It's also required to have a throwable, at least one, on your boat. Fire extinguisher is also a must. Make sure to check that it's not expired. If you haven't boated in a while, then it's chances are that it might be expired and you need to get a new one. Another requirement is to have a set of safety flares. Now, this pack that I have right now is made by Orion. It's an emergency marine kit. It typically has everything that you need. I'll make sure to link that down in the description below. It's only about 60 bucks and it has a lot of good items in it. And one other important item that you need is some sort of noise device to signal other boaters. You can have an actual air horn or if you have a boat equipped with one, that also meets the requirement. All right guys, once you've picked a location to go scalloping, um, you'll want to do a couple of important things to ensure the safety of other people who may be scalloping, but also the safety of your boat and the seagrass. The first thing you wanna do is once you get into the area that you're thinking of looking for scallops is you wanna take your boat off plane and go to idle speed. You also wanna trim your motor up as to not disturb the seagrass, which is a very vital part of this ecosystem. It not only provides filtration in the water, but a habitat for bait fish, which in turn offers the ability for game fish to eat, be happy, and allow this fishery to remain the way that it is for years to come. Trim your motor up enough, that way the prop is still in the water. You don't wanna do it too much, otherwise you could risk overheating your engine. One way you'll know your motor is too low is if there looks like mud coming out the back of it. You wanna make sure that the prop wash is crystal clear water, otherwise your motor could be digging into either the grass or the mud and that's not good. One quick tip before we get in the water, make sure if you are picking out some goggles to get some goggles that have really good anti-fog lenses or pick up anti-fog gel. They make it, you could probably get it at Walmart or wherever you're picking up your scalloping gear. But one thing that's really annoying while you're scalloping is constantly having to defog your goggles. If you can prevent it, you'll have a much more enjoyable day while scalloping. I highly recommend having at least one person in the boat as a spotter. This is not only good to help wave off any other boats that may be getting close, but also to keep on the lookout for sharks, stingrays, or anything else that might appear dangerous. Although scalloping is generally a really safe and fun activity, this is still the ocean. There are predator fish in there, and it's always better to just have an extra pair of eyes on the boat. All right, so as we jump in the water here, I wanted to show you guys what it looks like underwater and what to look for while you are trying to find scallops. You're gonna to wanna to look for grassy areas. Scallops really like to live in the seagrass. Um, there are some different types of grasses to look for, but really any grassy area, especially turtle grass like this here, is where you'll most likely find scallops. Now I will say, if this is your first time scalloping, it may be a little bit difficult to find find them at first, but what you're going to want to look for is little scallops in the grass. Sometimes they're laying right on the surface of the grass, but a lot of times they're going to be hidden down towards the actual bottom, like this one. If, you, uh, if we zoom in just a little bit here, you can see the outline and ribbed nature of the scallop. That's what you're gonna be, wanna be looking for. Now, a lot of times, one side of the scallop is gonna be lighter than the other side, so keep an eye out for those. And once you get a couple scallops and start to notice what they uh, look like underwater, you'll get the hang of it, and then they'll start just popping out to you left and right. Some areas might be a little harder to find them, um, but just keep an eye out for the scallop shape and then also slight variations of color in the actual water or grass when you're looking for them. Now this scallop here, those little blue things, they have eyes on one side of them, the side that actually opens. Don't be afraid if they 
chomp down on you, there's a possibility that you might get a little bit of a pinch, but it doesn't hurt too much and they will typically let go. Thank you for watching today's video. Don't forget all of the gear is listed in the description below. And if you have any other questions or tips of your own that you would like to add, definitely leave them down in the comments section below. Until the next video, guys, I hope you're able to get in the water and catch some scallops.